Dear friends, welcome to Bond with RK Chemistry YouTube channel. In previous video, I explained the most important 30 identification tests of organic functional groups. In coming videos, I will explain in detail about these functional group identification tests. In this video, I will explain the identification tests of unsaturated compounds that is alkene and all kinds and also I will explain the identification tests of alkyl halides. Let us take uh, unsaturated compounds. The unsaturation test can be done by using bromine water test or base test. In bromine water test the reagent is bromine water or 2 percent is bromine dissolved in carbon tetrachloride. The color of this solution is a reddish orange color. When you treat this reddish orange color solution with alkene, this one is colorless. This one is a colorless. When you treat uh, this colorless alkene with bromine solution, this one is a reddish orange color. There is a formation of 1,2-dibromoalkane. This one also colorless. So finally, the reddish orange color will be decolorized when you treat alkene with bromine. Similarly, when you treat alkyne with bromine, there is a formation of tetrabromoalkane. In this case, in this case also, there is a decolorization of a bromine solution. In base test, the reagent is 1% KMnO4 solution. Thus, color of this solution is a pink color. When you treat base reagent with alkene, there is a formation of diols, 1,2 diols, and also there is a formation of brick red precipitate that is manganese dioxide. So, in this case, the pink color KMnO4 will be converted into brick red manganese dioxide. So there is a decolorization of a pink color of KMnO4 in presence of alkane. And also when you treat KMnO4 that is base reagent with alkyl, there is a formation of a tetraols and also there is a formation of manganese dioxide. In this case also there is a decolorization of a pink color of KMnO4. If you take the balanced equations, in case of alkenes, 3 moles of alkene will react with 2 moles of KMnO4. In case of alkynes, 3 moles of alkynes will react with 4 moles of KMnO4. In both the cases, in both the cases there is a formation of uh, MnO2 and also there is a decolorization of uh, pink color take place. Terminal alkynes. What are terminal alkynes? If you take uh, this alkyne triple bond CH, suppose uh, if the triple bond carbon is attached with at least one hydrogen, these hydrogens are acidic in nature, more acidic in nature. These hydrogen will react with the tolens, tolens reagent and also ammon ammonical cuprous chloride reagent. So when the alkyne contains a triple bond CH, these alkynes are called as the terminal alkynes. And also we have internal alkynes. These alkynes do not contain triple bond CH. These alkynes are called as internal alkynes. By using Tollens test and also ammonical cuprous chloride test, we can distinguish terminal alkynes and also internal alkynes. In case of terminal alkynes with Tollens reagent, Tollens test, there is a formation of white precipitate if you take internal alkynes, there is no formation of a white precipitate due to not having a acidic proton. 
Suppose if you take Tollens test, when you treat terminal alkane with ammonical silver nitrate, this is a active reagent, active chemical in the Tollens test, Az and H3 twice plus. When you react with the alkane, there is a formation of silver salt. This one is minus and this one is plus. The silver salt has a white in color. Here there is a formation of white precipitate. Suppose if you take ammonical cuprous chloride, ammonical cuprous chloride, the active reagent, the active chemical of this reagent is Cu and H3 twice plus. When you react with terminal alkynes, there is a replacement of acidic proton. Here this one is H plus, acidic proton will be replaced by Cu plus. There is a formation of a cuprous salt with alkyl. So there is a formation of a red precipitate in the case of ammonical cuprous chloride test. By using these two tests, you can easily distinguish which one is terminal alkyl, which one is internal alkyl. How can you identify alkyl halides? Here we have Bale strain test. In Bale strain test, uh, the reagent is copper white. This one is uh, placed on the Bunsen burner. Then on the surface of the copper white, there is a formation of uh, cupric oxide there. Then the copper white will be dipped in in the given organic compound. Then it is subjected to flame. When there is a formation of a blue-green flame, the organic compound will be alkyl halide. In this case, alkyl fluorides, if you take alkyl fluorides will not exhibit Bailey strains test, but if you take alkyl chloride, alkyl bromide, and alkyl iodides, these three halides can exhibit a Bailey strain test. What is the reason? In case of alkyl fluorides, there is a formation of CuF2. We know that CuF2 is non volatile. This one is non volatile. Flame test will be exhibited by only volatile substances. So, if you take uh, chlorides, bromides, and iodides, there is a formation of CuCl2 or CuBr2 or CuI2. These three compounds are highly volatile. So, there is a formation of uh, flame test in the case of alkyl chlorides, alkyl bromides, and alkyl iodides. Here, what is the reaction? First, there is a reaction between copper and oxygen there is a formation of cupric oxide on the surface of the copper and this cupric oxide when you heat cupric oxide with the alkyl halide there is a formation of a cupric halide when you heat this cupric halide there is a formation of a blue green flame so Bailey's strain test if you take this one is positive to, towards a Chlorides, bromides, and iodides, and uh, fluorides will not be identified by using Bailey strain test. And second one is alcoholic silver nitrate test. If you take alcoholic uh, silver nitrate test, uh, AZNO3, here when you treat alkyl halide with AZNO3, there is a replacement of halogen with uh, NO3 minus. So there is a formation of uh, RO NO2 plus AZX. Here, if you take AZCL, silver chloride, silver bromide, and uh, silver iodide, okay, these substances uh, can form precipitate. If you take silver chloride, this one is a uh, white precipitate. Silver bromide, this one is light yellow precipitate, light yellow precipitate. Silver iodide is a yellow precipitate. So you can easily distinguish 
which one is chloride which one is bromide which one is iodide by using a alcoholic silver nitrate test this one is exhibited by all the alkyl halides primary secondary and uh, tertiary alkyl halides suppose if you take sodium iodide test okay this one is a uh, sn2 type of uh, reaction in the case of uh, sodium iodide dissolved in acetone this is a reagent here i minus is the nucleophile okay this is the nucleophile when you treat alkyl halide with uh, sodium iodide there is a sn2 type of uh, reaction we know that tertiary alkyl halides tertiary alkyl halides uh, do not exhibit sn2 type of mechanism so from sodium iodide test we can identify primary alkyl halides and also secondary alkyl halides so when you treat alkyl halide with sodium iodide which is dissolved in acetone there is a formation of uh, alkyl iodide and sodium chloride in case of alkyl chloride sodium bromide in case of sodium alkyl bromide we know that if you take these salts sodium chloride these are ionic sodium bromide these two are insoluble in acetone that's why there is a formation of a precipitate in acetone this is about a sodium iodide test in coming video i will explain identification of alcohols phenols carbonyl compounds and also amines thank you thank you very much